Well, today is March 24th, 43 degrees here in North Dakota. And as you can tell, we've got a lot of snow that has melted. The river is partially open and the geese have started to come back. And pretty soon we'll have the wood ducks in the nest. But uh, for now, we're going to do a little more detailed update on the motorcycle. And again, this is a... 1966 Ducati Scrambler and the frame and everything is all done wiring etc etc and I've moved on to the motor and uh, here's kind of some of the detail and we're going to get into uh, some shimming but I wanted to point out a couple things that I did um, I fabricated the chain guard. I couldn't find one new to buy. So I made this out of eighth inch by three quarter stock. This is just a piece of the old chain I have on there. Put this on just for looks. Had it stick out. It's a flathead screw so there's no impact with the chain. I'm going to put the camera on the tripod here pretty quick but we're going to talk about how all the timing marks line up. Here's a male dot to a female pocket. In other words, a male tooth to a female pocket. On this gear, there are two marks. Here is a male, and here is a female. And this female mates with the male on this driven gear. This is part of the crankshaft. And then this female lines up with this male. So there's a mark here and here. This one obviously lines with the timing gear. This one lines up with the crankshaft gear. And this is also a driven gear, the bevel driven to the vertical bevel. And I'll be quiet just so you can hear. Just the tiniest amount of play there. This is all flush. And I'll put the camera down and we'll uh, get a better shot of how the shimming and stuff works. One other thing I want to point out is every time you have a shoulder up against a bushing, there will be a, a washer. They call it a thrust washer. So behind this is a, it's stuck right there but is a, a bushing. I think I get this back the right way. And behind this one is one. And, uh, and like I said, we'll look at the shimming here in just a second. All right, so we got the uh, top cover in the gasket off. And uh, again, remember there's this shim it was actually shimmed with two of them when I took the motor apart, but I was only able to get one in there and still be able to get the gasket to seat in a snug manner. So the shimming that is going on is up on top here, and I think I have three of them here. I have, yeah, two thin ones and a thicker one. Um, I put the thicker one up against the thrust race of this upper bearing and to get at the shimming on the bottom um, this bearing housing here slides up and down in a fairly precise manner it's it's a uh, a close fit you just got to kind of wiggle and work it out little by little here All right, so this at this point is simply a housing with two bearings. There's a thrust bearing on each end. They are radial thrust bearings. They have a little bit of motion to them. And the thrust surface is on the out sides, this side against those washers, this side against these washers. Um, I can't show you inside because this gear doesn't come out, but the if you were to shim, you would add shims down in here. So what you have to do is put the shimming on um, 
and then put the shims back on top to make sure there's no end play, put it all back together, snug it up, check to make sure you've got just the tiniest bit of motion here and the flushness of these two gears. Something to remember is when you put your two cases together, uh, I made this mistake. I didn't insert this gear first. I thought it had nothing to do with the inside, but this gear can't go up in here because this is the crankshaft and it won't fit there. So hopefully it'll save someone a little bit of embarrassment in time that you loosely put this gear in place and then do the inner assembly. So let's put this back together. Uh, line up the mark. Again, take the uh, bearing housing assembly. And again, note I have my uh, shims down on the inside. Let's see if we can get this to go together. All right. And then just little by little, you kind of got to work it down in here. Keep your gear mark where you want it to be. Get that all down inside there. Take your shims. And I put the thickest one on the bottom so it goes up against the thrust face. And then you put your snap ring back on. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention now that I think of it is when I bought these washers, the shims, I mean, um, you get a, a package of them. And I know that these washers are stamped out and they end up with a rounded side and a sharp side. And what I did is I laid them on some thousand emery and rubbed them to take the burr off because if this is a four thou thick shim, the burr was actually about three thou, so it acted odd when I was trying to get things stacked upright. Um, humorously, a friend of mine said, well, that's what the oil filter is for, is to catch that, but we know better. So uh, make sure you deburr your shims before you put them on. One other thing that I did over here is you'll see that my case was broken and I worked a lot on the clutch and assessment of springs to get the package just the way I wanted. And I had a new stainless steel pin made, I got it assembled, but I fabricated this chain guard because I couldn't find one to buy. And I added a tab here that actually supports this side of the pin. And that along with this should make this a real strong assembly in order to uh, push this in. So that's it for shimming now. When I get my cylinder and head back, we'll do some shimming on top and hopefully I can share some information with you then.